News TV, giving you a voice. At the end of today's show, you're going to have your own business. Just follow me step by step. My name is Hyacinth Fortune Ngozi, and today on Business Corner, I'm going to teach you how to start your own business as a student in Nigeria. Before I begin, I want you to pause this video, bring out a sheet of paper, or open a notepad on your phone. So pause the video, get out a sheet of paper, open a notepad on your phone. And don't say, ah, you'll do this later, and then swipe on this video. Trust me, that's how you will continue to be broke and poor. I'm telling you, bring out the sheet of paper, continue watching this video. So let's begin immediately. Time now, money. So the first step to starting a business is obvious. Know the business you want to start. But it's not so simple. There are things you have to consider when thinking of the kind of business you want to start. First of all, do you want to be selling goods or services? Now, goods is in the terms of, do you want to sell weeds, bags, laptops, you know, clothes, phones? Or do you want to sell services? Maybe you want to sell your services as a dry cleaner, a digital marketer, a video editor. Maybe you want to do baking, a house agent, programming. All those things are services. Those are things you do for people. You want to do electrical work. Like I know students that do electrical work. So these are services that you can render to people and they'll pay you money for it. Or you can sell goods. So you have to think, do I have some skills, some services that I want to sell? Or would I prefer to just sell goods? Maybe you don't have that time. You just want to sell goods, you know. And So think about this. And while you're thinking, I also want you to know that you don't need to have goods to be able to sell goods. Neither do you need to have skills to be able to sell services. Let me explain. So let's say you have people around you that are looking for digital marketers. Like you know so many people looking for digital marketers. And you don't know how to be a digital marketer, but you know a digital marketer. Automatically, you become a digital marketer. Tell those people that you're a digital marketer. Charge them. Add something extra. Take the money. Pay the digital marketer. Take what's on top. Everybody's happy. Same with goods. You don't, need to, you don't need to have the goods in your shop before you can sell it. So that's a Iyawo that you are following online that sells wigs. She's like, ah, come and buy wigs from me. She's selling in Lagos, 15,000. 15, you can get it from her at 15,000 there. Tell your customers it's 35,000. Yes. Tell them it's 35,000. Once they send you the money, you pay her the 15,000 there. Use 3,000 there for your shipping, right? And then you send the week to the person. How much is that? That's 18,000 minus 35. You do the math. That's over, that's about 8,000 there that you're just making, just, just, just profit, just cash. So it's actually not hard. You don't need to have that skill. You don't need to have that good for you to start a business. So just think, let your mind think. You can actually take a pause and think of the business idea that you want to, that you want to have. Now, I'm also going to be doing this with you. So I will think of my own business idea. So while you're also thinking of this, uh, also put into consideration the problems you have around you. Maybe there's a problem that people are having around you that is yet unsolved. Maybe you see a lot of people looking for house. So there is no house. Like they don't have, they don't really have houses around school and people are always looking for house. That's a problem. Or... There's no, there are no much shops around the student area where you, where you live. Maybe you're a student or you just graduated, but there's no just, there's no much shops around there. So people are always having to go far distances in order to buy things like Indomie or Pepe. You get that kind of thing. So if there's a problem around you, ah, that's better because already you have people that they already need what you like, what you're selling. So make sure that there's you're solving a problem around you. Think from that direction. And also consider your environment. You can't be selling 1 million Naira wigs to students. Most students can't afford that. So maybe you want to start selling wigs. You will look for the cheaper options or you will now have like a variety of wigs that you're selling. Maybe you're selling, you will now have 30,000 Naira wigs, 50,000 Naira wigs, 150,000 Naira wigs. You get the drift. So think of the environment around you, what do they like? 
what can they afford? Maybe if the people around you prefer suya to goat meat. Uh -huh. So if you're thinking of maybe you want to start selling meat or you want to start, you know how to cook very well, you want to start cooking. So you will not be selling, you can't be selling um, a, a goosey in Kano. Who will buy it? Very, very, very few people. So instead of selling a goosey, thinking of selling a goosey, you start thinking of sell, um, selling tuo, shinkafa, all those kinds of things you get. So if you are baking, if you are just take into consideration the environment around you. I'm hoping by now you should have an idea, something that is coming to your mind. So remember that sheet of paper, write the idea down. Because like I said, by the end of this video, you will have your own business. So I've thought of my own idea. So let me write it down. Um, this is my idea. So there's a problem around me. A lot of people live very, very far from school. Well, not so far, but far enough that it takes a lot of time to trek to school, right? So there's an area that I know that is inside, inside, inside school. And it takes them a lot of time to trek, to trek inside school. And also the UNN shuttle does not go outside school. So how about we create and um, we create a service. Now I don't own a bus, right? But I know people that drive buses, they shuttle men, right? They own buses. So how about we meet them and we tell them, okay, look, um, we have some people around inside school that are willing to pay you to come to their houses and pick them and drop them in school. So these people, they will all pay you together. They'll all contribute their monies together and then they'll now pay you. So you come every day by 7 a.m. and then you pick them and drop them inside school. So this is a problem that I've seen. People are living inside school and they have to trek for a very long time to come to where the shuttle park is to take shuttle. So now we are taking the shuttle to them. So the shuttle will come to their doorstep, pick them and take them inside school to, their, to the drop off points, that the official drop off points inside school. So we've thought of a problem, right? And we've solved it. And as you can see, everything that I'm saying here, I don't, I don't have any boss. I don't have anything that, like, I don't have any physical boss or anything. You don't need to have money. Let me debunk that, this, that claim. You don't need to have too much money to start a business. With one gigabyte of data, you can start a business. One, how much is one gigabyte of data? You can start a business. All you need to do is be able to market your business very well and it will sell. Not just that, to believe in your business. Because the truth is that when you get your business idea, not everybody will support it though. And you also have to listen to those people that don't support it because that's where you get the idea to improve. They will tell you the reasons why you don't support it and you improve on those reasons. And if so many reasons are coming up and people are saying, no, 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 then you can trash it and develop a better idea. You see OPE today. OPE didn't start as a destiny you know, as a bank that transfers money. No. What did they start as? They started, they were trying to get drivers to like they were trying, they were start, they were trying to enter into the transport, transportation industry. But they didn't make it. And when another opportunity came, they grabbed it. And right now, they, they made the most profits of all the banks, like banks that have physical location. They made more profits than them. So any idea that you've conceived right now, you must believe in it and you must be willing to grow it. So with all this, my talk, if I don't get idea by now, write it down. So I've written down my idea. And now... To the fun parts, you need to have a name for your business. I mean, every business have a name, has a name. Don't think too much of it. Like the first thing that pops in your mind, right? Maybe if you are, if you're religious, if you have like you're religious, you believe in God, uh -huh, you could get um, inspiration, you know, from your faith to show that, oh, God is backing up my business. So you have something that is related to your business. Okay. Um, another idea for choosing a business name is that you can get something that, don't get something that is too long. It's Shadrach, Misach, Mishak, and Abadnego Transportation Services. To it, get something that is catchy, something that is short, something that once you tell somebody, the person can remember it. And then don't get something that is hard to spell, that is hard to pronounce. Maybe you, you tell somebody, my business is um, um, UNN Connect. And your connect is K O triple M E C R T. 
your connect is another <laughs> not that spelling. So when, when you tell people your name, they are confused. And you now have to explain, like you're telling somebody the name of your business. You now have to explain the name to the person. No, no. Please stay away from that. If your if your business name needs you to explain the spelling and the meaning to people, it's not a good business name. Your business name should be simple, catchy, straight to the point. In fact, it, it doesn't even need to symbolize your business. Maybe you're selling clothes. Your business name can be Excellence Wears. Simple. Classic collection. Like, nothing too hard. You, you, you mustn't say attires and wardrobe whatever don't don't make it too too complicated if, it, if it's too complicated people will remember it if it's too complicated people will not remember it the shorter the simpler the better so what would i call my own business mm. be thinking you know because once i'm i get my idea we have moved like i said time now what money okay so for example my business now is unn school bus that's the name that i'll give my business so you see it's short it's catchy everybody can remember it i chose unn because unn means university of nigeria and that's the university where i am right now so it's relatable to the environment i mean to the students i mean and then school bus because it's kind of like a school bus the bus goes to your house picks you and takes you inside school unn school bus so you see, nothing too complicated, very catchy, easy to remember. And yeah, so that's it. So I hope by now you've gotten your name and you've written it down. So let's think of another idea. This one now is more like a service, right? It's a service that you're offering. You're taking people to school. So let's think of maybe I want to sell something. Mm -hmm. Maybe I want to sell perfumes. Uh -huh. Let's call it... Um, Mm, royal royal perfume or smell good smell good <laughs> so so we could call it smell good smell good is not it's nice oh but let's call it royal perfumes everybody knows what perfume is royal perfumes hey <laughs> so we have two different businesses now one is a service right the other one is what? Goods. I'm selling perfumes. I'm not doing anything. The other one is a service. I'm helping transport you to what? School. So the same with you. Your service could be dry cleaning. It could be programming. It could be marketing. It could be baking, cooking, selling of suya. Like you fry suya. Anything that has to do with your hands, anything that it's you doing it, it's not like you're selling a finished product that someone has already made. So now my goods, I'm selling perfumes. You could sell bags, shoes, wigs. Just make sure that it's something that the people around you want to buy. You get. It could be necklaces, jewelry. As long as the people around you want to buy that thing. Don't go see it. Forget your passion. I'm sorry, but forget your passion. Don't go and be thinking about what you like doing. As much as that is important, the first, your first priority should be, what do the people around me need? Because you can be doing what you like, you can be selling what you like doing and nobody is buying it. At the end of the day, you will enter frustration. Because the truth is that work is work. Whether you enjoy, maybe you enjoy taking care of babies and you want to be a babysitter. That's by the time you spend morning to your nights taking care of babies, that's when you realize that it's work. Although it's, it will be easier for you than someone that naturally hates babies. But at the end of the day, it all boils down to work. So please make sure that the business idea you have is solving a problem that is around you. People actually want to buy what you're selling. It's not you. It's not what you like. It's what people around you like. Business, you have to be selfless. It's about serving others not serving yourself. So as much as I say that, because also try to go into what you're good at. See, the first priority is what other people want. Then the second thing is what you're good at. If you check between programming and digital marketing, there's a market for it. But you're not so good at coding. All these mathematics does you, used to give you, you know, headache. 
But you're good at marketing. You love talking to people. You love getting people to buy stuff. You always have ideas about making people, you know, like you, making people like what you have, making people purchase from you. That's marketing. And you, you're you good at it. Then go for what you're, you're, you're better at. So with these few points of mine, I hope you have your business name by now. If you don't, create one. Just find something, anything, so that you can participate in this. Don't just be watching me. Do something. Number two, you have your business idea. The second thing you would do is start, start, start the business. Start, start today. Start making inquiries and not just, don't just start, start small. Now you want to sell wigs. Don't go and start thinking of, oh, you want to ship in wigs from, from India. That will take you a lot of, like, it will take you a whole lot of experience, a lot of time, a lot of money. Maybe Natasha beside you or Natasha that you see on Instagram in the country, maybe she's she's in the next state or she's even in your, in your school. She sells very cheap books or she's just in Lagos. You tell her, ah, you just go to her page, get a few pictures, post it on your page. That's all. No. That's all. Start posting it on your WhatsApp. Post it on those groups. Talk about it everywhere you go. In another video, I'll be giving you tips on how to advertise your, your products using sh social media. How to actually get word out that, ah, I'm selling this to you know, or I'm doing this thing. So let's say you have a service. Uh -huh. Don't go and start thinking about, um, um, you want to, maybe you, you're having a dry cleaning service. You're thinking about buying a washing machine, buying a generator, hiring, renting out a shop. So let me tell you, I know somebody that lives in the hostel. He lived, used to live in the hostel, boys hostel, and started a dry cleaning business. He washed with his hands. He will wash the clothes, rinse it, spread it, iron it. Now, he has a washing machine. He has a generator. He has two rooms, like two rooms for his this thing. He has those big, nice irons. Recently, he bought a fridge so that he can expand his business. Start small. Everybody that you see now succeeded, started from somewhere. And do you know what starting small does for you? It reduces the risk because there will always be a risk in business. There's always that chance that, ah, what you plan for do not work out. The way you imagined it is not what actually happened in life. So imagine you have gone to borrow 100,000 naira to invest in that your business and it now flops. Where will you get the money from? So think, what is the smallest way that I can start this my business and then start it? So let me give an example with my own. So I, I said I wanted to do UNN school bus, Abi. I will not go and talk to all the people that own buses in UNN. First thing I'll do is I'll create a WhatsApp group chat, right? I will now go and start publicizing, publicizing, oh, this, looking for the actual customers. Do you need, maybe I can create a flyer, find a friend. I'm not going to pay for flyer. No, 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 no. I will find a friend that knows how to design, design fly, flyers. Maybe he's just learning. Just design a very simple flyer. You don't need too much gra, 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 gra. Design it very fast. With flyers, the more simple, the better. People can see your information easily. Design it. I can even design it by myself. Use Canva. Put some things together. They have all these Canva templates. Just get it. Put some things together. Post it. Post it. See actually what people's response are. Do they even want this? This problem, I think, exists. Like, do people think it's a problem? Do they enjoy trekking? You know? Post it on different, different group chats. Get my friends to share it on their status. Talk about it. Now see whether people actually demand. I will demand this product. Then I'll now talk to only one boss owner. One. One boss owner. And I'll go only to one area. I won't say I want to cover if anywhere you are. I'll say maybe if you're in this particular place, maybe we have people coming from, from Gagalagwa, people coming from Oshun, people coming from Ongo, people coming from different places. I will not say, I will not say, oh, I want to cover everywhere. I'll say, no, if you live in Gagola, that this service is for you. We are currently expanding to other areas if you're interested. Then I'll now check what's the response from those people. So if the people from Gagwalada agree, uh -huh, 
I will now link them to the bus owner. I've organized it. I've started small. I've reduced my risk. So now I don't have so much pressure on me. Once you now start small, you can now start expanding. Expanding. Once that one clicks, I can now expand. Okay, two buses, three buses. Then we expand to more areas. That's how business works. So you've reduced your risk of failure and your risk of what? Hypertension. Hmm? So start small. And then another thing is time management. You must not forget that you are a student. If you have just graduated, ah, congratulations to you all. Congrats. Eh? God when. But if you are still a student, still an undergraduate, you will not fail your exam simply because you want to make money. And you will not, you can't survive without money. A lot of times that money that is some, some they send to you, uncles or guardians or your parents are sending to you, is not enough. At a point, it looks as if you are trying to deceive them. So you need that extra cash. You know, if you don't need the money, please leave. This show is not for you. It's not just, you can't swipe. But if you need money, please remain with me. So you need money, right? And you still need what? You still need to focus on your academics. So, in fact, the truth is that everybody needs money. And if you don't need money, you need to build a business. Because if you feel graduate school, you know, go see work. <laughs> stay with me, stay with me, stay with me. <laughs> you can graduate and you will not get a job. And that's what will make you, you know... That's why it's going to keep you in that period where you're still looking for jobs. And not just that. Business is an opportunity to create jobs for what? For others. So if you don't need money, people around you need money. So that idea you have, don't hide it to show it to the world so that people can get jobs. So anyway, what was I saying? I was trying to say that you need to be able to balance yourself so that you will not lose, lose guard. So the first thing you can do is you can create like a schedule. Time management is a skill. Create a schedule. Tell yourself, okay, this is when I'm doing this. This is when I'm doing that. This is when I'm doing this. Create something reasonable that you can follow. Don't go and say you want to study for seven hours stretch. You, you, you know, you know that you will sleep off in the middle. Or you will come out having, you end up having headaches or something like that. So please, create something that is manageable. Or you, you wrote that you normally wake up by, you will now be waking up by 4 a.m., when you know yourself, you know that normally the time you used to wake up is 7, 8. And you are now creating a schedule and putting it for 4 a.m., 3 a.m. It will not work now. All of a sudden, in a day, you will change just because you created a new schedule. No. So create something that is achievable, workable. And that's the reason why I encourage you to start small. So that when you start small, you can manage the stress from that small one. And the more you, you grow, the more your capacity will grow. So another thing you can do to manage your time is get a partner. If you, if you feel your course is too stressful or you don't have so much time or you can't handle it alone, get someone that will work together with you on this business. So maybe you can be doing the thinking, the coming up with new ideas, and the person can be doing the action, you know? And sometimes you don't have all it takes to run a business. Sometimes you need other people's help, other people's ideas. So if the project is looking like, ah, this thing is swallowing me, talk to someone about it. Maybe you, maybe you know that particular guy that is brilliant, he's good at what he does. You know, you join forces with the person. And people also bring in skills that you yourself may not have, connections that you may not have, ideas that you may not have. So don't be selfish. Don't say, ah, we will not be sharing the profit. How much should be left? See, Half of zero is still zero. If you don't get a partner and the business flops, what do you gain? So if getting a partner is going to get you the results you need, so get, get a partner, share that idea. Not they do, you know, um, what do they call these people that play ball, but they don't pass the ball. Don't be doing selfish ball. Get a partner. So the next thing you're going to do to help your business is to network and build relationships. This one is also linked to getting a partner. Don't be a stay at home, this thing. House, you know, house, place of worship, school. House, place of worship, school. No, no. So 
Network, attend events. They say they are doing events for business. I'm tired. Go, go for that event. Go for that conference. Talk to people. You see people discussing about a particular thing and it really interests you. Enter their conversation. Eh? Enter the conversation. Let them see. Net In life, the connection you have determines the places you get to. And university is one place that you can build a lot of connections. If you miss it now, you've missed it. Who you know determines where you will be. That's why you, you will come out tomorrow and be saying, ah, he's cheating, he's Ojoro, this person got the job. We, we didn't even know. A lot of jobs now that people are getting, they don't make advertisements. Like, you don't put up advertisements and say, we are looking for so-and-so. It's word of mouth. This person tells you that, ah, this so-so-so place has an opening. And you apply. So, the people you know matter a lot. That's why you have to surround yourself with the right people. Anyway, topic for another day. The last, but not the least. No, this is not the last. The second is the last. <laughs> know your competition. Find out the people around you that are doing that same thing you are doing. There is nothing new under the sun, says the wise man Solomon. There must be someone that is doing something similar to what you are doing. Find that person. When you find them, find out what they are doing, how they are doing it, and copy them. Copy them shamelessly. After you copy them, you add your own so that you will be better than them. A word is enough for the wise. And my final tip on starting a business starts. Start the business. Don't go from this video to the next video looking for more tips on starting business. See here. You will not know everything about the business before you start it, trust me. When you start it, that's when you start discovering new angles, new problems, new distance. And the more you solve them, the better you become. Don't have inferiority complex. You must believe in yourself and believe in your idea. Yes, you can make that business idea work. You have what it takes. So put in these points that I have told you and start the business. If you have any questions on starting your business, Comment it down below. I'm here to help you step by step. I'm also going to be starting my own business. So hmm. this thing I'm saying here is not for sure. It is not. I've already thought of my business partner. And I'm going to be starting my own business. So if you're not starting yours, you're losing out. So join me on my business journey as we make our businesses work. I'll be here next week posting again you can come in with your questions you can come in you can even suggest a business idea maybe you already have a business and there's a difficulty that you're having suggest the idea i'm here for you thank you so much for joining us join in again next week My TV, giving you a voice